Hello, my name's Tess Hills. I'm a puppet maker and a puppeteer. I've been intrigued and enchanted by puppets ever since I was a child, and that's carried right on into adulthood. I love that you can make something inanimate come to life. You can give it a character, energy, emotions, and a whole narrative. These are some of the puppets that I've made for my street theatre acts and that I perform with with my company Curious Cargo. I've also been commissioned to make puppets for other people's shows and other events too. Here's some pictures of the puppets that I've made over the years and some of the making processes I've used as well. The puppets range from tiny suitcase puppets to a mouse finger puppet to a pig rod puppet swimming in the sea. I carved blocks of reclaimed styrofoam to make a carrier pigeon and a roosting pigeon, both for storytelling sessions at a museum. This is Scruffy the dog, commissioned by Manchester Art Gallery, and he's carved from foam. The heads of my meadow sprite puppets were sculpted in clay cast in latex and all hand-painted and decorated with spring and summer flowers. Oldham Theatre Workshop commissioned me to make three imp puppets for their Christmas show. I used cardboard and recycled materials to sculpt this bear puppet. Here I am sculpting the head of my Busy Lizzie Flower Lady puppet. From the clay sculpt to this final outcome. Some puppets are massive. This was a giant witch commission for a Halloween show. And big puppets are often used in parades, like this glorious sun puppet. I particularly love shadow puppets and I've been really lucky to work for a couple of fab companies who use lots of puppets and shadow puppets in their shows. This first show is The Elf Factory, made by Little Big Top. It was written and directed by Joe Williams and myself, Joe and Vanessa Card were the makers and performers in this show. We toured it around early year centres in the lead up to Christmas with the elves muddling their way through all the presents and trying to get them delivered in time for Christmas Day. I also performed with Horse and Bamboo Theatre Company in two of their shows. In the Shadow of Trees was written and designed by Bob Frith and directed by Alison Duddle. A shadow screen was incorporated into the back wall of the set and some scenes used shadow puppets or animals or figures to tell the story. I also performed in Vale. This show was written and designed and directed by Bob Frith. A shadow booth was used at the start of the show, wheeled on by the performers and told a story. Later on a shadow screen was created from a sheet and we told the story of a baby being born. I'm the masked character holding the sheet up at the side. A few years ago I created two short shadow films for Imperial War Museum North to accompany an exhibition they had featuring children's stories about wartime. War Horse is about a boy and his horse and their experiences going from peacetime to battlefields during World War I. Carrie's War is about evacuee children who have to flee bombed cities and escape to safety in the countryside. Set during World War II, we follow Carrie as she departs the devastation in London. Carrie and the other evacuee children travel by train across the country to Wales where they are to wait out the war. The Welsh countryside is a strange new world for her, with a landscape full of bird life, and full of animals.
all waiting to be encountered and explored. I work a lot in schools and run puppetry workshops, often exploring shadows. I make a simple shadow screen using a big white sheet which I hang from a clothes rail. You could make a screen where you live by hanging a sheet from a door frame, over a clothes rail or even from a kitchen table. You then need a light source. In my workshops I use an overhead projector because it's a bright strong light and it allows me to project and enlarge images onto the shadow screen. We used coloured acetate and we cut it into shapes or we draw onto clear acetate with sharpies or OHP pens creating patterns and with these we put them onto the OHP and make colour scapes. We can then use our bodies to make shapes and shadows onto the screen. It's really effective. We also use everyday objects to put onto the OHP bed and we project those. You get some really interesting effects this way. You don't need to use an OHP though. You could use a light source like a angle poise lamp or a torch or the torch on a mobile phone. And then all you need to do is put something between the light source and the screen and hey presto, you've made a shadow. Shadow puppets are performed against the screen to give a crisp, dark silhouette and shadow. These traditional shadow puppets are made of stiff, thin materials like card or plastic and are cut into and jointed so that their limbs can be moved by the attached rods. The rods mean that the puppeteer and their hands can stay out of sight of the screen and the audience will never see the puppeteer. These are some of the shadow puppets that I use in my workshops. You can see that they're drawn onto card, cut out and then thin rods, bamboo or garden cane are stuck onto them. For jointed movable limbs I've used split pins, pipe cleaners and bits of garden wire to make a hinge between the two bits of card so that the limb can then be movable. Even just bits of cut out card can look fantastic once they've been put against the screen and they've become a shadow. Look at these, they're marvellous. I think the thing that I love most about shadow puppetry is that it's a really simple concept. All you need is a screen, a light source and then something to come between that to create the shadow. Simple yeah? And yet it transforms the space. It's really magical with beautiful outcomes. I hope you've enjoyed this and that you might like to play with some shadows too.